I'm Joshua Bardwell, and if you're a person who has a broken USB port on your flight controller, and ever since Betaflight 3.1 came out, you haven't been able to connect to your flight controller, you're going to learn something today. And if you're not that person, this video may not be super for you, but I know you guys are out there because you've been in the comments and you've been asking me, I upgraded to Betaflight 3.1 and now I can't connect, what do I do? Well, I'm going to tell you why that happened and I've got a fix for you today, a very exciting fix in fact, and the fix is not to flash back to Betaflight 3.0 or 301. No, I have a fix for you. <music> Okay, so here's the deal. Betaflight talks to the configurator using a protocol called MSP. So in order for the flight control board to talk to the configurator, the MSP protocol has to be active on the port that the flight controller is using to talk to the USB port. Now normally that's UART1 on many boards, it's UART1. UART1 is connected to the USB port via a thing called a CP210 chip. The CP210 chip does the translation between the serial protocol and the USB protocol, and that's how the flight controller talks to the, the configurator. But some of these boards have a thing called the virtual COM port, the VCP, and we see that right here on this board. The board that I've got here is the Rotor Geeks SSD. It has no fewer than five UARTs, and a virtual COM port. And the advantage of the virtual COM port is that you can talk to USB without tying up a UART. And that means you have all of the UARTs available for things like your serial receiver or your GPS or telemetry or whatever it is that you wanna do with them. You're not tying up one of your UARTs with the USB port. Now, if you have a board that doesn't have the virtual COM port, then you're gonna have MSP enabled on UART1 and that's how your board talks to USB. And what that means is that if you happen to break your USB port somehow, you can still talk to the board. What you do is you get a thing called an FTDI adapter and you connect it to UART1, you connect it to the pins or pads on the flight controller that are tied to UART1. Most flight controllers will have those broken out and you can still access the flight controller via UART1 just bypassing the USB port with your FTDI adapter. And if all that stuff was gibberish to you, then you haven't run into that situation. But again, for those of you with a broken USB port, you're nodding along and going, yes, yes, that's what I do. Well, here's the problem. In Betaflight 3.1, the decision was made to not enable MSP on UART1 by default for VCP boards. And the reason for that is that with a VCP board, you don't need to have MSP on UART1 because you're using, the v it's not tied to the USB port, you're using VCP. And having MSP enabled on UART1 gets in the way of some of the other things you might be doing on UART1. So there were some support issues coming in to the Betaflight developers, people saying, well, I'm trying to use serial receiver on UART1, but it's, it's not working correctly. And the reason it wasn't working correctly was because MSP was enabled. And there's absolutely no reason to have MSP enabled on UART1 if you have a VCP board, except if you have a broken USB port and are using an FTDI adapter on UART1. Okay, so that's why when you flash to Betaflight 3.1, it stopped working. You stopped being able to access your board because Betaflight 3.1 does not enable MSP on UART1 by default anymore. But here's the workaround. The workaround is that a helpful person who is in the same situation compiled a bunch of Betaflight through all of the Betaflight 316 hexes, but he made a tiny change in that MSP is enabled on UART1. So the gist of it is that if you have a flight controller with a broken USB port and you've been using an FTDI adapter on UART1 to configure the board, you can now upgrade to Betaflight 3.16 and still be able to access your board using the hexes in this uh, link that I'm going to give you to this Google Drive uh, folder. Okay. Now, you should be aware that I haven't tested any of these. So take it with, a, you know, be very careful. Uh, they may not work at all. <laughs> but basically, uh, I think that they probably will work. It's a relatively simple change to make once you're set up to build, and the guy who did this clearly is set up to build, and everything is probably going to work fine. Let me know in the comments if it works for you. Uh, if any of them don't work, let me know in the comments as well, and I will coordinate with uh, this helpful person. This helpful person is Kevin Boyer. Credit to Kevin Boyer for, uh, for going to the effort of doing this and uh, for allowing me to pass this all on to you guys out there who are having this issue. 
Well, that's going to do it. Uh, if you are a person who's run into this issue, now you have at least a temporary solution to get you to 316. But of course, you know that 317 or 3.2 is coming and you're going to run into the same problem. So maybe Kevin will keep up a, a parallel uh, repo of some kind where he <laughs> flashes in this way. I don't know. But for now, you're good to go to at least 316. Hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you're having this problem, I know it's been helpful. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.